Hello guys, Jonathan here once again with maybe a bit of a samey looking firearm this time. A few weeks back we covered the HK, Hecker and Cock, of course, GR3, which was a little bit weird. Sort of a modernised HK33, both 5.56 five, by 45 chambered, of course. Um, so it was sort of modernised and had an, a built-in optic. A little bit of a side shoot of the HK33 family, which is a side shoot of the G3 family. You get the picture. Well, we're not finished because in another recent-ish video where we covered the MP5-10, this is the MP5-10. I said that was the only roller-delayed HK with a bolt-hold-open device. It's the only MP5 and I think the only um, roller-delayed HK variant ever to bother to have one. And it's not true. Uh, thanks, Jordan, for reminding me that it wasn't true. <laughs> this thing has one too. So this is the HK G41. Superficially, very similar to the HK33. Um, and it is, it's, it definitely fits the same niche. Same sort of size, proportions, weight, ca uh, cartridge type. And it is still roller delayed, blowback operated. There's no... Uh, Technical, technically there's no locking system, it just uses those rollers and a wedge to keep the breech shut for long enough, just like the MP5, the G3, the HK33, as I keep mentioning. So what, what on earth is the G41? Well, two um, reasons for this coming into being. One is the NATO Standardization Agreement project launched in 1979, and this was going to standardize, in theory, everything, or everything possible, and give everything a STANAG number. So you might have come across the term STANAG. It's often applied to the um, AR-15 pattern magazine, which this has. That's an important change from the two others, the HP-33 and the GR-3. That never actually got ratified as a STANAG. So technically there is no STANAG magazine, um, but nonetheless. <laughs> so an attempt to standardize for NATO and one of the things they were going to standardize was the M16 AR15 pattern magazine, which necessitates this change to the magazine well, and therefore the lower receiver, to take the AR15 mag, as I say. And the other aspect, uh, so there are other standardization agreements, grenade launchers that would be relevant to this, um, ammunition types, the new, uh, what became the SS109 type of 5.56 ammo, for example, was, was the new NATO standard 5.56, because until then there wasn't strictly a NATO standard. And the other impetus was the United States Squad Automatic Weapon Program, which resulted in the M249, the, uh, the Minimi, being adopted, but included HK LMGs, and what they learned from tweaking that, those for that program then bled into a new generation of HK33, is the basic story here. So, I've mentioned the magazine, well, the magazine well, and that means, now interestingly, we don't have a right side magazine catch. So, we, but far from ha not having, uh, far from having ambidextrous controls, we still, we've gone from having a paddle on the back, which was ambidextrous by default, to a left side push button only. Push that with the thumb, pull out, much like the SA-80, funnily enough. Now, this magazine is HK's own in-house design for a 5.56 magazine. Quite a distinctive base plate. Uh, it has that shiny follower that's anti-tilt, which is a good feature at this time. Still made out of aluminium, or aluminium if you prefer. This is what becomes in steel the HK high reliability magazine, and that's what SA80A2 is supplied with when H&K fix the SA84, the Brits. So this is a, a linear, interesting lineage um, or, or legacy, I should say, of, of this rifle, is that this becomes HK's standard magazine design for 5.56. Albeit, if you want the high reliability version, it's steel, not aluminium. This is still quite light. Um, that new magazine well, as I say, necessitates a redesign of the front part of the trigger group, which, which amounts to, I mean, the, the insides are slightly different. A couple of components have changed, um, but nothing, nothing too significant for our purposes. What they do is to cut the front off the standard push pin um, lower. Um, in fact, I can just quickly pop that. That uh, one of two pins 
top and bottom on the receiver. So they've redesigned the butt socket on that. To pop out the two pins, we have our storage holes in the butt for those. Pop off the butt stock, and we do have this different design of butt. Really very similar to existing HK designs, but it's, it's this very robust, more metallic design, and the, and the plastic is pore molded onto the back of this metal component. Makes the whole thing more robust, was the idea. With the butt off, our trigger group drops off, and those of you who know the HK, or if you'd like to, like to check it, um, but take, take my word for it, all this is is the same molding with the front cut off and this metal insert added, which means instead of a push pin here and a push pin there, you just hook the trigger group in at the front and you rely on the push pin at the back uh, to lock it in. There are a couple of differences on the bolt carrier. If you want more detail on the inside of this thing, I recommend you check out the Armourer's Bench video, which features disassembly. Um, they have an article that goes along with that. Uh, we'll pop this back together. This is very much refinement, not, not revolutionary, or evolutionary, not revolutionary, I should say. Carry handle is added, spring-loaded carry handle, which was the rage in the 80s. A new NATO standard. Now, this is a site mount according to Stanag 2324, which is often cited for the Picatinny rail, the mill standard 1913 rail. Now, I haven't been able to actually dig that out and check this, but that actually applies to rules governing the interchangeability of securing and holding devices for infrared scopes on carbines, rifles, and light machine guns from 1961. So that Stanag 2324 cannot apply, surely, to the Picatinny rails. I think there's some misinformation out there about that. What it actually is, is this, a revised version of essentially HK's claw mount. So we have a whole new uh, pressing here. This is subtly different to the HK33 um, receiver pressing. And instead of little divots or, or, or pressings out on the uh, receiver down here, like on the MP5 as well, we have these much more robust welded on scope bases, essentially. So it's like a rail mounting system, or more like a rail mounting system, but it still takes a claw mount that takes a scope. We have a new chunkier handguard, so it's very wide. So the full length rifle is a fuller length rifle than the HK33. We have a six centimeter longer barrel at 450 millimeters for the, for the full length rifle. So the HK33 is more of a carbine by default, um, whereas the G41 was a, gone back to a, a longer barrel, which is interesting, I think. We also have for well, a return, interestingly, to the old Sturmgewehr dust cover. So, also applied to the AR-15, of course, this style of dust cover. So this has been sort of grafted back on to the an HK product to just keep the whole action more sealed and just relying on the bolt to do it itself. So that's, that's a new feature for an HK rifle. Now, if I pull back, if I very badly pull back the <laughs> cocking handle and don't give it the slap that we all know and love, the bolt will inevitably, or the bolt carrier will inevitably stay slightly to the rear. And that's where the other major feature learned from, learned from the um, US saw trials comes in, or rather US preference in general, I think, and that's the forward assist. So if you don't manage to give it the full travel, that this famous slap is there to do, and you can see the bolt has definitely gone fully home there. If it's not fully home, it's not going to fire, for those of you who aren't aware. If it sticks part way back, as it's almost guaranteed to with this system, if you don't, if you just ride the cocking handle, then you have a means of closing the bolt. And that click is the bolt slamming that last little bit forward. Now, H and K claim in their own marketing material and the manual that this is a silent bolt closure device. So if you're trying to silently reload your weapon, or well, you wouldn't be reloading it, I suppose, silently make your weapon ready, which is very hard to do, stealthy ninja stuff, and then you 
silently close the bolt. It doesn't really silently close the bolt at all. And in um, AR15 circles, people will vehemently deny that that's what the forward assist was ever for. And I think they're right. It was there to close the, the, uh, the bolt with a fouled round or dirt in the action. A lot of people say you should just clear that dirty round out of there and cycle in a fresh one. And there's a whole debate over the forward assist. So it's funny that HK invited the controversy by bolting or welding a forward assist onto their, what used to be the, G, uh, the uh, HK33. But they did it because they were hoping to meet uh, US and international expectations on what a modern service rifle was. So <laughs> that means AR mags, AR dust catch, AR bolt closure device. And the final, <laughs> the, what got what inspired me to cover this rifle is if we cock this on the magazine, it will hold open, which an HK roller delayed weapon will not do unless it's an MP5 slash 10 or a G41. And then, well, whether or not we take the magazine off actually, but there is this rocker switch up here not quite the ping pong paddle of the AR, but it does the same thing. I'll hold that, lever, that um, carry handle out of the way for you so you get a proper look at this. Slams the bolt home. So you, you put on a fresh magazine, of course, at that point, and pressing that will chamber your next round. And of course, all of that means you have the notches in the bolt carrier for this plunger to engage on. So each time, uh, yeah, there, are, there are multiples, but you're going to be engaging in one or maybe two of these to, to ratchet the bolt closed with either one or two presses. A couple of hits on the forward assist is standard in some loading drills, including the SA-80, funnily enough. Uh, we also have a longer cocking handle or charging handle, whichever you prefer. Now, that's not just for ergonomics. Well, it is, but that's because they've made this thing harder to cock, and I don't know why. <laughs> they've reduced the mass of the bolt carrier group increase the mass of the return spring. So it requires a lot more effort to cock <laughs> than an HK33. We'll swap rifles because this isn't just a full length rifle. As ever, it is a family of weapons. And if we put the HK33K short barrel length with the G41K, with the same barrel length. So the rifle barrel lengths are different, but the carbine barrel lengths are the same. Or the short weapon, I should say. And these are essentially the same vintage, so we can easily, more easily compare with, with these two guys. Notice how chunky the handguard is on the G41. That big cocking handle. Different cocking tube as well. I'll try and show you what I mean. You see that the ribbing is different. There's a big smooth section on G41 because it's a completely new, newly designed component, presumably easier to make. The body is different as well, um, very slightly. Notably in lacking these pressings for that claw mount that I was talking about. Those are gone because we don't need those. We've already welded on those scope mount pads. There's the uh, so the two the two the double pin more robust buttstock design versus the traditional single pin takedown of the 33. And there's that push pin front lower with the magazine catch on the right and the paddle below. And as we saw earlier, the G41 has nothing on this side. You can't activate the mag from this side at all. You've got to do it with your thumb on this side. So a bit of an issue there, and you can see the carry handle's not on the 33. There's no dust cover, there's no forward assist. I'm repeating myself. <laughs> so, confusing list of variants begins. We have G41, fixed stock, one in seven twist barrel. There are different twist rates in play here to different, different types of ammunition. The original 5.56 versus the new NATO standard. We're back to Stanag again there. So one seven twist and a 178 mil uh, barrel. We've got the G41A1, which is the fixed stock 1 in 12 twist. That's for the old style ammo that certain countries might, might have with a 305mm um, barrel. G41A2, which is a sliding stock in 1 in 7. G41A3, sliding stock in 112. G41K, which is what we have here with the shorter barrel that I've already mentioned, the sliding stock and a 1 7 twist. 
Um, and then a, also a G41K that doesn't have a different designation with the 1 in 12 twist. I did say it was going to be confusing. But you would work, if you were buying these things, you'd work with HK to decide what was the best product or products for you, I assume. So all of these changes mean that the the weapon's heavier, unfortunately. For the, for the full length rifle, that extra barrel length, it's also a heavier barrel. And a couple of other tweaks have brought up the weight of the HK33. Normally you want to bring weapon weight down, this brought it up. So 0 0.7 pounds, 11.3 ounces. Um, I will put the metric on the screen. <laughs> Significantly heavier, which is a shame, but you are getting a longer, heavier barrel that might well be an advantage, and you are getting all of these bells and whistles. There's no such thing as a free lunch. If you start bolting features back onto an existing weapon, it's going to gain some weight. Now, HK's ultimate plan for this thing was that it would be the sort of runner-up prize for German soldiers. So your frontline troops would be issued the G11, German Space Magic Caseless um, Wonder Weapon and your other units who are not expected to engage necessarily in frontline combat would receive G41s. And then you'd have other options of barrel lengths and, and folding stock, sliding stocks and things as well. And of course, it would become, in theory, the new HK33 for export purposes. And it did meet some success. It didn't entirely disappear. Um, but it was not, because the... Um, the, the German government went, or the German authorities went in a different direction, and, we, and they ended up with G36 instead of that two-tier system. It's interesting that we didn't end up there with G41 as the standard rifle. They did go for something. They shot for something in between, as it were, a lighter, more modular, more ergonomic system with G36, but not all the way to, to the moon, as it were, with the caseless um, frontline rifle. So that sort of failed for this, for this product. But there, were, there, was, there was some commercial success. Other, other countries did buy some of them. So the, the actual commercial orders for this system, they're all small. So, and I think they're all countries that had prior HK adoptions. Uh, certainly Spain and Turkey made use of uh, G3, HK33, that, those, those weapons, and purchased small quant additional quantities of this new system for sort of special forces or specialist troops. Uh, and also uh, Italy, Denmark and Argentina are make, were making some use of this. There may be other users, but it's, it's all going to be small quantities. This was not the new success story that the HK-33 had been. It had been moderately successful, but the G-41 didn't quite land. The weapon it's trying to supersede, the AR-15, still continued to reign supreme, essentially. Thanks for watching, guys. We do appreciate it. Um, as ever, we do have actual museums that you can come and visit. Um, check out our, our website, recently refreshed, and our social media outlets, um, the one that used to be called Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can actually play along, if you don't know already, with What's This Weapon by guessing what it is that we're going to be featuring the next week. Also, if you do visit our museums, check out, well, until the end of June at least, you can check out the exhibition Reloaded with a lot of decorated, cool and interesting firearms um, in there. And also, online, um, as well as our own channel, we are part of something called History of Weapons and War, which is an app that you can sign up to. Uh, you'll get our content ad-free, uh, same content on, from our side of things, but you also will get a load of, I mean, there are eight of us in total involved there, including Forgotten Weapons and various others that you'll definitely want to check out if you like the sort of thing we do here. But whatever you do, we'll see you again here next week.